don't know. <laughs> um, but Miss Amito yes. Legume, am I pronouncing that right? Yes, that's okay. right. Yay, okay, I just wanted to make sure. Um, so first and foremost, happy birthday. Thank you. Happy belated. Um, I know your birthday was December 3rd. Yes. Um, and congrats as well for receiving the Children Peace Award yes. in Italy. That yes. was amazing. That was I feel like that was a great birthday gift for you. Yeah. yeah. I was so grateful. I was like, yay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you look great as well. Thank you. Yeah, no Thank problem. Um, funny story how we met is, I don't know if you remember how we met. Of course. Oh, I do. do you mind telling the story? <laughs> no, you tell the story, okay. but I do very well remember how we met. Yeah. So we was at the WNBA um, rap party, mm -hmm. and um, I saw you at the bar, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, like this, she's so beautiful. Like, I gotta say hi. Like, yeah. you know, like I gotta ask for the skin regimen. Can I just say, honestly, I feel like you're not even expressing this to the full capacity the the lighting in this place was like dimly lit. Right, and me, right, right. Me and Shay were just like, who is that? Like, <laughs> Honestly, your beauty just like Stop shined. It. Literally, 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 yes, literally. It was like yes, yes, I was like, yes. she has to be a model. This is like no question. <laughs> and then we had, we definitely asked, and that's how we got to know Miss Amito. Yes. Um, and I'm really glad I even decided to walk up to you and say hello because now we have an interview. Yeah, I'm glad too. I'm so glad you, you you came to say hello. Um, I went to that. I didn't want to go to that party to be honest. I was just like, oh. <laughs> that's the movie. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> nice. I was just like, oh my god, ugh. I was like, no, I gotta dress up, I gotta put on a smile, it's right. like, lots of stuff. Anyway, but I'm so glad I did go, and I'm yeah. so glad I met you. So, yeah, that was a blast. That was wonderful. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask you, um, how did you become a part of the Children um, in Peace Corporation? So or I, foundation? Yeah, um, I am born and raised in Uganda, mm -hmm. which is um, Africa. Um, and I do a lot of work with the women and children over there. Mm -hmm. um, the Children's Peace Foundation work in Uganda as well. They're based in Italy, but they work in Uganda a lot. Um, and so they contacted me while I was in Uganda doing my thing. I mean, they tried to contact me for five days because when I go to, you know, to do work in Uganda, I go really deep down in the villages where there's no network, there's no internet, there's nothing. So it takes me like maybe two days to reply to texts so I reply I'm like sorry I'm in the village like I can't <laughs> yeah but anyway <laughs> they got to see the work that I'm doing um, and they were really pleased and you know they sent me an email they're like we'd like, love to give you an award for the work that you are doing in Uganda that nobody oh, wow. gets to see or even know about so that was pleasant oh that's yeah. so cute yeah it was really cute was so awesome. I want to know who is um, who was Amito mm -hmm. um, in Uganda like what was your life like before the modeling world yeah well I mean I feel like I did have a normal childhood mm -hmm. um, super chilled I lived in the city with my family um, I, I went to school mm -hmm. <laughs> like any other kid um, it was pretty normal. It was it was very normal. Um, I was involved in a little bit of modeling in Uganda, but it was it wasn't anything major. So, in Uganda, in Kampala, where I'm from, um, modeling is not really seen as a profession. It's right. a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, and if you try to tell people, oh my God, it's serious. It's a profession. They think it's maybe prostitution. Like I wouldn't be able to explain to my grandmother what I do. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, so that was the vibe. So for me, growing up, it was go to school, become a lawyer or an engineer or one of those traditional jobs. And um, I got an opportunity that sort of took me a totally, totally different direction, which I'm very happy about. Wow. Yeah. That is yeah. amazing. So what was this opportunity? I won a continental competition mm -hmm. that I, I, I think you we all know Africa's next top, sorry, America's next top model. So right. they do have a franchise in Africa called Africa's next top model. Yes. And um, I went for that competition. They actually did not have an audition in my country. They had it in a neighboring country. So I had to travel by bus oh my to God. the next yeah. country. That's dedication, girl. That's dedication. <laughs> I know. I was like, you know what? Let me give it a chance. Let me give it one last, you know, one last try and be yeah. like, okay, I've done it. Let's move on. Whatever. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I took a 16-hour bus. Wow. I went. <laughs> I was thinking four hours. Right? <laughs> it's not that big wow. of a deal. <laughs> and I got there, tired, hungry. 
um, sleepy, mm. and the audition was that morning. So I took the bus in the afternoon and arrived the next morning. The audition was that morning. I did the audition, and they mm. didn't give out results. So I kept on, during the audition, you would go from one stage to another. Right. So they would put you in little groups, and then you go in, and then they select, and then they push the rest out. And I kept on going from one stage to another, mm. and it reached 7.30 p.m., and my bus was leaving. So I had to tell the producers, I gotta go, like, now. Like, oh. tell me if I'm in or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, oh, um, we, we'll call you, you know, we'll let you know. I was like, what? what you, like, what is that? Anyway, yeah. I just, I was like, fine, whatever. I was like, you know what, I've given it a try. I've done my best, the best that I could mm -hmm. at that time. And I had to run from where the audition was to my bus because I, I didn't know anyone in that country. I had to leave. That, that same day yeah um, so yeah three weeks later they called me and they're like yeah we'd love to have you you know in the competition you come down to Cape Town um, in South Africa mm -hmm. and um, stay in one house with 11 other girls Wow and uh, fast forward the top three which I was among came to New York that same year which oh, nice. was yeah so we came to New York and then when we got to New York that's when uh, one of the prizes of, of course of winning the competition was signing to an agency in New York mm -hmm. and the top three came to New York and that's when the agency chose the winner that they wanted to work with and that's how I got to move to New York City from a little country in Africa right. and voila here we are <laughs> no, I love this story so yeah. what made you want to apply though to Africa Star Model um I wanted to give it a, a last chance yeah I really loved fashion I really loved modeling but I didn't see a future for myself in it okay. uh, because of you know how I was brought up and mm -hmm. my parents and you know all my relatives are very serious when it comes to like school you have to be a doctor a teacher engineer right. like very super traditional um, and to be honest, like f modeling or being a fashion model had a bad repetition in Uganda. Or right. Maybe not, not now, but yes, it did have a bad repetition in Uganda. Most of the girls who would pose as models were usually like prostitutes, low key, mm. and you know, stuff like that. So it did have a bad repetition, and, and my parents and everyone else didn't want me you know sort of involved in that mm. but uh, I, I told my mom I was like you know what I really love this and I think you know th there could be potential but the reality is that maybe there's not yeah. just give me one last chance let me give it one last chance I'll right. go for this competition if it doesn't work out I've given it a try and if it works out well I didn't think about it working <laughs> out to be honest I didn't think about that part I was just like if it doesn't work out I've given it a try I didn't think about whether it would work out and it did work out so yeah nice so did you have a wait background? can I ask did you guys have to do like crazy competition like challenges I know yeah. like, <laughs> like the like the oh, actual TV show my god yes so hmm okay uh, <laughs> so there's one challenge. So we shot in South Africa during the winter. First of all, I'm from the tropics. We've never experienced, I'd never experienced winter in my life. Mm. I didn't know how it felt like to be really cold. Mm. And so we were shooting in South Africa and we were shooting during the winter. And there was this particular photo shoot where we were supposed to pose underwater. Let me just say, <laughs> oh I God. cannot in the winter? swim. I was gonna ask you yes. <laughs> No. <laughs> Guys, I can't swim. Oh my god, so what did you do? Honey, you made I had it work, to though. fake it until I make it. Yes. Make it, yes. There we go. There was, a co there was a contract at stake. There was $50,000 at stake. I was mm -hmm. like, you know, it's do or die. Like, <laughs> I, I respect that. I respect that. You know, I was like, it's do or die. I have to, I have to do it. I have to freaking fake it until yes. I make it. Yeah. Yes. And so yeah, I, I faked it. The, the, the photo <laughs> came out bomb though, it right? It came out, I was opening my eyes underwater. Yes. I was shook, I was like, yes. oh my god. Did you let her swim girl? after that though? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson to the story, you know? Like. <laughs> right, lesson learned. You could miss a job because you don't know how to swim. Swim, right? <laughs> oh. Yeah, anyway. So, did you have a plan B though, um, if you didn't get into America's Next, um, Africa's Next Top Model? You know, my plan B, I had already graduated from college. Mm -hmm. um, I had, a, I think, a bachelor's degree in PR, and I was gonna, you know, do that. I was gonna go back to school eventually, maybe get a master's, like mundane, right? Yeah. You know, day to day, uh, live a normal, I guess, 
mediocre, I don't want to say mediocre, but honestly mediocre life compared to what I'm living <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah mediocre course. life in back in Uganda. And yeah, that was my plan B. And yeah. this was just, you know, a, a thing that I did to tell my brain that, you know, you've given it a try mm -hmm. and at least you've tried. You move forward knowing that you've tried and, yeah, you've given it your all and that's that's the best that you could do. Yeah. So how do your, fa your parents feel about it um, now that they see you living this life? Well, now, of course, they're happy. They're like, oh, my God, this is so happy for you, so proud, for, proud of you. My, <laughs> my grandparents in particular, like, you know, we, we still want you to be a lawyer, but, but if you're happy, if you're happy, it's fine. So, yeah, we're, we're kind of on the same page, which is more than I ask. I can ask for to be honest yeah that's really amazing yeah um so do you feel like winning the um competition yeah um did it pivot your career into i think it was just the beginning it was for me i don't know about pivot but it was the beginning of of you know a career for mm -hmm. me it opened the door for me to get you know to come to to move to the to the u.s to yeah. especially in particular new york um and you know open the door for me to travel the world things that i'd never imagined would happen you know happened in in such a positive light which i'm super grateful for yeah. yeah yeah and i won fifty thousand dollars let me just okay. say that right so, let that be known okay <laughs> <laughs> listen <laughs> from nothing to fifty thousand that was <laughs> that is life-changing yes. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So I know the host of the show was Aluchi. Yes, Aluchi. She is a model from the nineties. Yeah. Um, and she's a supermodel, African supermodel, who actually also won a competition from Africa and then moved to New York. To New York. Yeah. 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 So yeah. she was paying it for it, and it was very sweet. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys still in um communication? Like absolutely. You guys still yeah. Oh, so nice. She's my mentor, and uh, I really love I love her dearly. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love that. Okay. <laughs> Cause you know sometimes like um when I was watching one of the interviews with um Eva from America's Next Top Model mm -hmm. and even not Eva sorry Winnie Harlow she claimed how like Tyra, Tyra Banks didn't really help yeah. her much in mm. the modeling world yeah. so I just wanted to know exactly like how um if it's the same for you or if it's right. different but right. it's different and I'm I'm happy that yeah. you guys are still communicating no and I'm in, contact. in touch with Aluche a hundred percent and it's yeah, we have a great relationship. Yes. Yeah. So will you be hosting a Africa's Next Top Model anytime soon? I don't know. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> right? We can put it on the table. <laughs> right? Yes. Start right from zero. <laughs> right. Like, what am I about to do now? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, yeah. it's funny how we can all relate to this. No, like, seriously. <laughs> it's too real. Not even. <laughs> so you model with IMG. Um, so model I'm. Worldwide? Well, I'm. So I was signed to IMG until yesterday. Oh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so let's update. Get this update. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exclusive. Until yesterday. So I decided to move to a smaller agency. Okay. Um, because I thought you know it would manage me a little bit better and it would have they would have time for me to be honest. Yes. Um, IMG is great. Um, but they have so many uh, girls who are beautiful as well. Mm -hmm. And so I just decided to downscale to something a little bit smaller and manageable. And it's a very chic boutique agency called Heroes. Um, and they are lovely. They have such a great team. And uh, I'm very excited to like be working with them moving forward. So, Aww. yeah. Would you say that... Because one of my friends, she is a model as well. Um, she signed with M Wilhelmina. Mm -hmm. And I do notice that sometimes they have a hard time finding bookings for them would you mm -hmm. say that's kind of hard for you or um to be honest process? to be honest with you i cannot give you like a straight answer for that so okay. I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll just tell you my experience like there's a year where i didn't work for six months wow. and then the year like after after that period where i didn't work for six months the next year i like worked like crazy like oh. non-stop back to back so it just I guess it differs, you know, right, right. Uh, and sometimes it's not even like the agency. Sometimes it's just the season where it's just dry and there's and nothing they, going on. For a specific yeah, look exactly. Yeah. And it's dry. They're looking for a specific look, and maybe you don't fit that look. Yeah, it's quite stressful. It's mentally, it's a mentally taxing job to be honest, because right. that constant rejection. They're telling you, oh, sorry, it's you're not the one they're looking for now, and you're like, damn it. Okay, great. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> you know, it's funny that you say that because I wanted. To to ask you if you had any advice for younger mm. girls who are going yeah. through the situation because I feel like when it comes to modeling as well like mm -hmm. sometimes you hear like oh 
um, you don't fit the right, what yeah. I'm looking for, mm -hmm. or this is not, you know, like, this is not the standard that I'm trying to yeah. um, go with right now. Yeah. So what is the advice you could give to little girls who want to become models? You know what? Don't take it personal. Mm -hmm. Nothing is an attack towards you particularly. Um, don't take anything personal. And that's one of the things that I've, you know, been learning. Um, I don't take anything personal. If a client doesn't want to use you, a client doesn't want to use you. And it's okay. You know, the next client will want to use you. Right. And, and not want to use the other girl. So it's like, it's not personal. It's not a, an attack on you or your character or the way you look like. Mm -hmm. It's just life and it's just what it is right? Right, right um yeah so try to have like that solid foundation in within yourself and just convince your mind that it's not personal it's not you it's not you mm. that's the only thing you can do yeah. yeah okay yeah um i did see there was a story back in the day of um correct me if i'm wrong too because i i didn't really understand the full story but it was something where they were going a around like your lips like they were talking about your lips what is this story like okay. if you could explain it for yes. me <laughs> oh my god yes okay so i think it was 2017 mm -hmm. or 16 i'm not so sure um <clears throat> i was backstage um during fashion week and mac cosmetics was doing the makeup for right. the particular show I, I can't quite remember but um they took a picture of my lips with dark dark lipstick mm -hmm. and put it on their Instagram and there were a few racist well racist comments on it on the Instagram page and I remember I was I wasn't even in New York at the time I was in Milan oh, I wake wow. up in the morning and I find like hundreds of messages like a meter what's going on and to be honest with you I had not experienced racism because mm -hmm. I'm from Uganda listen everyone's dark and black right. in Uganda I do not know what racism is at mm -hmm. this time and I was just like okay my lips are making you cry I don't know like you know um but you know I, the m the more the days went on the more it became an important issue to, yeah. to know, you know to address and mm -hmm. talk about and um and so that's how it happened and that's how I found out and um um, I did address it on a, on Insta on Instagram in a in a in a more playful manner. I posted you know the same picture and I was like, okay, my lips are giving you sleepless nights, like you know. <laughs> but uh, to be honest with you, it was a more deeper issue than yeah. that. Um, and uh, I think they wrote a, a few articles um, on it, New York Times and a couple of other um, major publications wrote you know a few articles on how you know a black woman is always uh put down for her futures and if someone other race has the same futures they are kind of praised and right. you know that kind of thing so it was a whole thing. situation it's crazy because nowadays <laughs> yeah. like there's so many people that are outside of our race that are trying to get the lips that you have you exactly. know so i think like yeah. i don't know like what's the problem exactly. with this at this point yeah. Yeah, so that was the whole, yeah, thing yeah. about it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, it was society. That was my welcome to, you know, racism. So, oh, my gosh. My welcome. Oh, my That's God. a big welcome. Yeah, right, right, right. right. <laughs> but it's, it's amazing, though, how you could, how you didn't let it bother you, yeah. one. And at the same time, how you could really um, be like a, like, kind of like a, um, a turn point for yeah. the world, too. Because, yeah. like, you kind of show people, like, you know, yeah. This is my culture. Like this is it. This like is it. yeah. Not, like what am I? What do you want me to do? Get a redact? Like right, redaction? right, 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 no. right, right. Yeah. And you don't have to change yourself. You know, right. you are beauty. Thank you. Period. <laughs> Period. You are beauty too. <laughs> so um, I saw that you was doing this thing on YouTube. It was called Model Off Duty. Yes. Um, and I like the concept of it. Yeah. I think it's really dope. But there was one thing that really caught my eye. Yeah. Um, I think it was your second video yeah. where... Well, actually, first of all, let's... I wanted to ask you, what is it about? And why did you decide to create this? Okay, so I think I was, a, I was at a time where I wanted to hear other voices. I wanted to hear their side of the story, especially models in the industry and how they... How they... Um, how how what's happening in their lives you know mm -hmm. and how they treat whatever is happening because it's people don't understand like behind the scenes it's honestly a really really tough job yeah you know you have to be like an athlete you have to eat right you have to take care of your body you have to stay positive you have to mingle and network you have 
oh my god <laughs> like <laughs> and then now to add on top of everything you have to have instagram followers because yeah. some clients do ask they're like how many followers do you have on instagram right mm -hmm. and some people just don't have that personal personality of of you know posting on instagram and whatnot and whatnot so that was the whole concept around model of duty i just wanted to find out what makes other models like me tick well mm. For the future, I wanted to do maybe fashion of duty or whatever, or whatnot, but I had access to the models first, so yeah. that's what I started with. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I think it's really dope too, because I like, like, for me, like, when when I was younger, people told me I should be a model just because of my height, mm -hmm. and I never really thought about it until I saw my friends doing it, and mm -hmm. I was like, okay, you know, but I didn't really understand the background of it, mm -hmm. and I, like, listening to your videos, I'm like, oh, okay, this mm -hmm. doesn't seem that bad, it's what they do, it's what, like, their life, yeah. and stuff like that, I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, but one thing that did capture my eye was the Cairo chamber that you had in yes. your second <laughs> video. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, that was, the first time I seen this Cairo chamber, I was actually watching, um... Um, T.I. and Tiny's family and friend hustle, hustle and Tiny was doing it yeah. and I wanted to know like what was that experience like because I know it's freezing it in there cold <laughs> let me tell you so <laughs> no 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 you don't understand it's very cold oh my I gosh I wanted to use the F word but let's just go with very <laughs> it is very cold in there and it's only three minutes but it's like the coldest three minutes of your life wow so if you're like me and you you know work out often mm -hmm. you know you have muscle aches and that it does help repair your um tissue and your muscles quite yeah. faster uh and so that's why i do it so those three minutes of pain for like better muscles or like less mm -hmm. pain is like worth it it's like almost icing your body you know like yeah, when you have an yeah. ache like ice your body and that's that's kind of, I guess, the concept oh. behind it. What is the temperature? Yeah, it's minus two seventy-five or something like wow. that. Wow! No, it's really cold. It's wow. Gross. Wait, I'm a little slow. How does it work? <laughs> like, is it steam? Is it like a mist? So it's nitrogen something. Um, oh, it's like a chemical. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it's yeah. So the nitrogen. So it really like they release it for mm. those three minutes, and then it just. Sort of and freezes. you just stand there? Yeah, you stand yeah, there you for just those stand. three minutes and it freezes like your whole body for three right. minutes. Right. Oh, yeah. Like I know it's like a cylinder around yeah. it kind of. Yeah. It's funny because I used to do, um, I used to run track and I had to take ice baths. Exactly, so it's like the same. Same thing, yeah. yeah. But I think I think the Cairo um, chamber is a little shorter. Because like we, we used to be in there like 25 minutes just like shivering in yeah. there. Like that was three minutes is not as bad. Yeah, it's not as bad, <laughs> but it's way colder, I think. Right, it is, exactly. it is, it is. So so the longest three minutes of your yeah, life? No, it's long. <laughs> so what I do is like I put on a song that I know the words to and I can sing to. Oh, that's so, so like, smart. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> That is so smart. <laughs> yeah. So, do you have any more episodes coming out though for Model of Model Duty? Model of Duty. You know what? I haven't made any episodes again mm -hmm. or yet, uh, but I plan to. I really do plan to. I think okay. it was a fun concept, and it's one of those fun projects that I can just do, you know, whenever, mm -hmm. whatever time. And uh, yeah, I think I will do more episodes soon. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Yeah, of course. I'm excited to see. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to know. I should have asked this in the beginning, actually. What does Amito mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is from the Acholi tribe in Uganda. It's from the Luo group. And the Luo is, well, it's a tribal group. Mm -hmm. Same as President Obama. Same as oh. Lupita. Oh. Hello. Oh, that's <laughs> some royal blood right there. Legend. Yeah. <laughs> that's my legend. Yeah. Right like, I just wanted to throw in that there. I just wanted to, you know. I just should. Yeah, I should. I should. <laughs> like, shout out to President Obama and Lupita. All right, cool. Uh, so, Amito means, it, it depends on the context. Um, mm -hmm. Well, for my, why I was named, it means I love you. So when you want to tell someone you love them, you could say Amito. Oh. If you want to say um, I, I need you or something, you could say Amito. So depending on the context, you can use it. And mm. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's basically love. Yeah. I've always you. wanted like an African name for myself. But, yeah. You know. Let's go with Amito. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, I don't want to steal your name though. Like, <laughs> we can share. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I like that. <laughs> We can share. Or you so can go with... Um, we should go with the word food. How do you say that in your... Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> let's not. Let's. <laughs> it's, chum. it's just chum. 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 Yeah, it fits you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't with him. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much, Amito. Thank you. Um, what is next for you in 2020? Um, you know what? 2019 has been so fundamental and revolutionary, but internally, so not externally, internally, in my life. So I'm hoping that everything that has, the inner work that has happened inside will come out in 2020. So that's what I'm hoping. So fingers crossed and yeah. I'm excited to yeah, see you. Yeah, me too. Yay, okay, well, you know, we're rooting for you. Thank you. And we're going to speak that Af Africa top model you will be hosting. And maybe even America's next top model, because we want to bring that back, too. Yay. you got to be hosting that, too, you know? So, speak that to existence. Yeah, amen. You know? <laughs> so where can everyone follow you? Um, I'm on Instagram, and I do reply to all my DMs, just so you know, I do. Nice. Um, I can attest to that. Yes. <laughs> Um, well, just, you know, my Instagram is Amito Lagum. It's A-A-M-I-T-O-L-A-G-U-M. And basically that's it. Yeah, Amito Lagum. And yeah, if you text me or DM me on Twitter or Instagram, I'll definitely reply. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Of, of course. That's been great. Yeah. And this is Shay Says, guys. Two S is not one here on Party 101.9, home of the throwbacks and the iHeartRadio platform.